Guinness and Coke is fun. Welcome to Half Pint. Today we're doing some unusual Guinness combos. Just a quick disclaimer, I will be murdering some Guinness during this episode, so if you're a tr true Guinness diehard, then I recommend you just go and watch the video all about Guinness right there. I hope you're all having a great St. Patrick's Day and wearing green and getting drunk and thinking about visiting Ireland because it probably is very nice. Stout and stew. So we all know about Guinness cocktails. We've got Belfast Car Bomb, Black Suede, Car Bomb, Car Bomb Not Irish, Car Bomb 2, Dave's Diesel Highland Ghost. These ones that are basically Guinness with a bunch of other ingredients. They actually make pretty nice cocktails, but I thought if you don't like Guinness, what can you mix with it to make it a little bit nicer or a bit different? So I bought a range of things here, from the sensical to the completely ridiculous. I'm going to see what they taste like. I'm going to get pretty drunk, but it's St. Patrick's Day, so you should be drinking along with me. Let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, we're doing one that you've probably heard of. Guinness and red wine. Got a bit carried away before I started filming. It's a nice red, velvety colour and it's made the head go quite an interesting consistency. Red wine and Guinness doesn't really taste that different to Guinness, uh, so it's probably not the best thing to mix it with if you're looking for a different taste altogether. I mean, the fruitiness and the sort of the dark, bitter notes of the wine bring out the similar features in the Guinness. Okay, so next up we've got a pretty similar combo to the red wine. I think it'll probably taste the same. It's Guinness and cranberry juice. Kind of treating it like a shandy. Uh, it hasn't really changed the colour that much. It's got rid of the bubbles straight away and it's pretty much made the head go away as well. It's actually really nice. Cranberry juice on its own, as you know, is very, very bitter, bittersweet. And uh, adding it to the Guinness actually brings out a bit more of that sweetness. It's a good combo and I will name it Cran Guinness Berry, Cranis, Cran Gin, Cran Guinness, Guinnerberry, Guinnerberry, Ginberry, Granberry. I'm gonna call it Granberry. Okay, next up, I'd say we've got one of the most popular combos. No, and that's a complete lie. I don't know why I said that. We're doing Guinness and Dr. Pepper. That's disgusting. It tastes like marzipan, but there's no sweetness there. The Guinness just takes it away, and it's not a marriage made in heaven. I should really stop drinking it, but. What's the worst that could happen? The good news is we're almost at the end of the soft drink combos. The bad news is I ordered them from probably most likely to taste all right to absolutely probably going to be disgusting. Next up, we've got Guinness and Lucasade, the Brazilian. The Brazilian is a taste explosion where mangoes meet mandarins. Uh, and it's made this Guinness look really gross. So, hooray for this. Oh no, that's weird. You get the Mandarin Madness. That's not even what it's called. What's it called? You get the Brazilian straight away, and then you get this really horrible aftertaste. It just tastes like Mandarin Madness. That's not what it's called. Why am I still drinking it? Okay, last but not least in the soft drinks. We've got Guinness. And chocolate milkshake. Oh my god, the worst thing I've ever seen. Okay, so it looks like, um, looks like diarrhea. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Oh, God. It tastes like Baileys that, I don't know, been left out in the sun and then drunk and then shat out again. No, I feel myself going to beer hell just for carrying on drinking that. That is the worst combination. Do not put chocolate milkshake in your Guinness. Guinness and Pims and Lemonade. What am I doing? What am I doing? Um, looks the same. Smells, smells super grim. No, that is, that is the worst. I feel like I'm going sick. Oh God. Oh, that was so bad. I did buy a G&T in a can, but I'm gonna sack it off because that Pims and Lemonade was disgusting. We're gonna go on to this, which I have high hopes for. It's Guinness and spiced rum and coke in a can. Now that's completely horrendous as well. That is one of, that is j just so bad. There's just too much sweetness in it. Uh, it's not a pleasant, not a pleasant taste. Again, what am I doing? What the f okay, so that rum and coke was a little bit too sweet. So maybe this will work. Guinness and vodka and coke in a can. It's not actually that bad. Vodka always takes away the instant sugar hit of coke. And it goes quite nicely with that sort of burnt, 
uh, hidden spiciness in the Guinness. Yeah, it's not half bad. Guinness, vodka and coke. Now there is a classic drink you can make, it's usually made with Strongbow and Guinness and it looks just like this. Um, takes quite a lot of skill to make. No it doesn't, it's just got to pour it slowly. Um, I haven't got Strongbow today, I've actually got quite interesting looking from the Mississippi Woodshed Brewery Lazy Jack's American Style Cloudy Cider. It's definitely produced and bottled here, uh, which is why it's an American style. I like their branding and I like the sound of a cloudy cider. Not with Guinness though, but let's see. Okay, so with this cloudy cider, I did attempt to try out the crown top, crown head. That's pretty cool looking, I like that. Got the cloudy cider here on the bottom. You've got massive head because of all the, obviously the extra sugar in the cider. And they got that nice layer of Guinness. I think that's a really nice looking drink. You got the sun coming through it there. I got a boner. It's really not very nice at all. It's just a sour, burnt, bitter, creamy, but really refreshing. It's just, it's not a nice experience. Okay, we're almost at the end of our completely pointless St. Patrick's Day Guinness plus horrible mixer comparison. Then we got two nice beers to finish with, or hopefully. We've got Guinness and the Innocent Gun Scotch Whiskey Porter. A lot of you have probably heard of Innocent Gun, I know they sell it in the States. Earthy, woody beers that just have a lot of flavour and, uh, and they put a lot of love into them. As you'd expect, it looks exactly the same, I'm just mixing stout with porter. No, it's just a horrible, it's just not a great combo. That on the other hand is great. What delicious porter, it's very nice. It's very rich, rounded, woody, burnt. There's the burst of the sort of the scotch, uh, there's a little bit of sweetness coming from it. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so last but not least, we've got Guinness and Hogsback Tea. Mixing it with Guinness is called a black and tan. All it is is Guinness and ale. So this is a recognized thing. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Nice, actually it is, it really is. Um, adding the tea uh, completely takes away any of the creaminess of the Guinness, uh, that's, the, that's the first thing you really notice. Uh, makes it a lot more refreshing, gives it a little bit more flavor. Uh, but it's a nice combo. Black and tan, man, I'm a fan. Of all the ones I tested, cranberry juice, vodka and coke, and the hogsback tea go quite nicely with it. I think cranberry juice is the far and away winner, and if, you're, if you've got a pint of Guinness at home, then Try and track down some cranberry juice and let me know what you think. And on Friday, we've got a very special guest to take us through hot beer. It's apparently a thing. So that'll be coming out on Friday. That should be a pretty fun episode. Thanks for watching. Happy St. Patrick's Day. If you're going out tonight, then get hammered. And remember St. Patrick's motto. Ye who had unto us forgiveth thy forever. Guinness. On the 31st of December, he signed a lease for £45 a year for the St James's Gate Brewery for 9,000 years. Oh, you know, it makes sense, you know, life expectancy in the 1700s was, was 36 years old, so he's, he's covering his bases for the next 250 generations.